to the human beings from God. Um, so would you like to say the Shahada? Well, the problem is like, I don't, I don't want to put myself in a box. I don't like put myself in a box. No, actually, it's, it's sincere, yeah? A By the way, he three. says so many Two. profound things. Yeah? One. Yeah. So tell me what you believe. Well, I believe, like I was telling him, yeah. uh, I do believe in a creator, but I don't want to put myself in a box, especially here on Speaking School. So, yeah, I believe in a creator, like you were telling me. Okay. So, you, that's good. Alhamdulillah, you believe a creator. Do you believe that the oneness of the creator? What do you mean the oneness? So, do you believe that this creator that uh, created the universe, created us and everything in it, everything in the universe. Do you believe that that creator is one? As in like he's like eternal, like he's... No, just one. Rather than there being two creators or three creators or oh, four. Oh yeah, yeah, just one. Yeah, I believe in one. Okay. One, one, one. <laughs> what do you think the relationship we should have with that creator is? Our purpose, really. Well, like a father, isn't it? Father and son. I think it should be like that. Okay, I can see where like you're coming personal. from. So you're saying personal, yeah, like, like you said, father. like a father, but not exactly a father. Not right? exactly a father. So not biological. Than father. Right, interesting, because you know, the Arabic word ab, it means father, yeah? Rab is more comprehensive, which is what we use for the term God, yeah? yeah? Which means like the master, the lord, the sustainer, the maintainer, right? So so you, you would accept that there should be some kind of relationship where we're sub submissive to this creator. Yeah, yeah, would you accept that? Yeah, yeah, I accept it. Okay. Now, how would that take place? How would it? How would it actualize in a in a real world? In the real world, what to submit to the father? Oh, not I wouldn't call him the father. So I would say the creator, right? The creator, yeah. So how would we submit to the? Uh, to, I was going to say to the father. How do we submit? To <laughs> <laughs> the creator. How do we submit to the creator? Yeah. Uh, Our creator. <laughs> Well, I, I, I pray, I pray at home, in silence, um, yeah. Are your parents Christian or? My mom's Christian. Your mom's Christian. Christian. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Where are you from? I'm originally from Colombia. Oh, interesting, yeah. yeah. Alright, so you pray at home. Yeah. How do you pray? What do you say? I say I pray Father. Yeah. I don't say no name, but... Okay, good, okay. So I'm asking the question right now. Do you think that this creator just left us on the earth to our own devices or do you reckon it's more appropriate for us to believe that this all-knowing all-powerful maintaining sustaining creator actually put guidance for how we should worship him which one makes more sense well the guidance ones makes sense okay so what muslims believe in is that we believe that there's a long line of prophets and messengers all of which that came with the same message, which is to believe in a one God and to submit yourself to one God. Yeah? And through a particular code, guidance, if you like, yeah? And all this guidance had been delivered from prophets like Jesus and Abraham and Moses. And we believe that Prophet Muhammad was the final prophet. And whereas all the prophets that came before Prophet Muhammad were sent for their localities and their people, yeah. Prophet Muhammad was sent for all times and all people. Yeah. So messengers would come with two things initially they come with the, the message which is always the same and the miracle or the evidence for the message which takes the form of things like prophecies and uh, in the in the in the, in the um, context of the quran we believe the quran itself is a linguistic miracle we believe that uh, the structure of the quran is miraculous the life of the prophet is uh, a testament to his character and these things so if i were to tell you this and I'm sure you've heard maybe some of us speaking about this before. What comes to mind when I say this? Is this a coherent thesis which is a better taken than left? Or would you believe it's better left than taken? I think it's uh, better taken, I think. Okay, so it seems like you're already there. So what, what would happen if you... When you say the Shahada, the Shahada is a testimony of faith. It's the first pillar of Islam. What you're recognizing is that there's no God worthy of worship except for the Creator, which is how we call it Allah. And where we're realizing the, the authenticity of all of the prophets and the legitimacy of their, of their revelation. So this includes prophets like Abraham and Moses and Jesus and of course Prophet Muhammad as well. 
And for that reason, we will say that we agree with all of the previous dispensations in so much as that they don't conflict or contradict the Quranic narrative. The Quran, of course, is the, the book <coughs> that is sent to the human beings from God. Um, so would you like to say the Shahada? Well, the problem is like, I don't... I don't want to put myself in a box. I don't like putting myself in boxes. So, okay, I mean, look, I think what you're referring to here, telling everyone, I don't like to put the whole idea of putting yourself in a I box like labels. I don't like or labels, labels or stigma and these things like relates to no. perception, of particularly what other people might think of you if you do that and how other people might compartmentalize you or categorize you in the scheme of other people. The truth is you're already in a box. You're in a box of being a Colombian man living in the 21st century uh, with a British upbringing, okay? We as human beings are already in boxes. Dogma doesn't necessitate falsehood. So just because if you say, like, for example, I'm a person that believes in, uh, you know, uh, mathematics, right? Or I'm a, you know, I'm a lover of coffee or whatever it is. This is a kind of, it can be a kind of dogma if you push it to a certain ex uh, limit. Yeah. But when you have that dogma, it doesn't mean that your the dogma is wrong, right? So I think your, your contention is more to do with a sociological perception of other people towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, Allah in the Quran, he says something about this. He says it to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, وَتَخْشَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ أَحَقَّ أَن تَخْشَاهُ you fear the people or you you're in awe of the people and Allah is in more has more right for you uh, for 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 you to fear him uh, and in Surah Al uh, in chapter 8 of the Quran it says Allah describes a certain people it says uh, they don't this people that are brave and for at the fore of uh, promoting justice they don't have any fear of anyone except for him. So, if the issue is putting yourself into a box for fear of what other people will think of you or how other people will treat you, then you should have no fear because actually, the truth is dogmatic. And Islam is the truth, you see. So, if that's going to put you into a box, then it's a box worth being in. Because why, why, why is Islam the truth and not like, um, Buddhism, Scientology or Christianity or... So we would say all of those systems might have aspects of the truth in them. But fundamentally, when you look at things like Christianity, the idea that there's a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that there are three in one and one in three. And this whole theology, you would say, is a bankrupt theology in terms of its rationalization. You can't rationalize it. You have, you have three in one and one in three. And Buddhism is not really a religion in the same way as Islam is or Christianity is. Uh, as I, some people refer to it as a spiritual system. Scientology is very modern. And once again, doesn't claim to be from God.